Now let's try some problems together. Remember, the equation of a line that represents a non-proportional relationship can be written in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line and b is the y-intercept. Now I'd like for us to try question number four. Chrissy says the equation of the line shown on the graph is y equals 1 half x minus 5. George says that the equation of the line is y equals negative 1 half x plus 5. Which student is correct? Explain. Although these equations look pretty similar, what we need to notice is what the picture of the line is showing us. I see on the graph where the line crosses the y-axis, and I've marked that with a point. So what number is that on the graph? That's the number 5. So the ordered pair that represents that y-intercept is 0, 5, and 5 is positive because it crosses the y-axis above the origin. The next thing that I want to do is look for the slope, and the slope of this line can be found by taking any two ordered pairs that I can see on the grid and using the rise and the run relationship between them. So another ordered pair that I see here on the grid is this one right here at the point 4, 3. So look for the rise and the run. In this case, I see that I'm going to be moving downhill. So 1, 2, is the downward motion and moving across one, two, three, four. So the slope actually ends up being a negative one half. So who had the slope at negative one half and who had the y intercept b at five? And that would be George. So George had it right that the slope was a negative number moving downhill and that the y-intercept was a positive 5, not a negative 5. Now let's try question 5. Farah wants to rent a tent for an outdoor celebration. The cost of the tent is $500 per hour plus an additional $100 setup fee. A. Draw a line to show the relationship between the number of hours the tent is rented. X and the total cost of the tent, which is y. So remember, the additional setup fee tells us how much we have to pay before we even have any hours for the tent to rent. So this is my initial fee. And it is only paid once, okay? The hourly rate is paid depending on the number of hours that the tent is used. So the line is going to be um, starting at that initial fee. So we start the line at $100 for zero hours because that's how much we've had to pay to set up the tent. Now we can use the $500 per hour to put more points on the grid and connect them. So at one hour's time, we have to pay $100 to set it up plus $500 for the hour. So that means $600 is our total fee after one hour of use. So the line that connects those two points looks like this. What is the equation of the line in slope-intercept form? So remember we're looking at what is the slope and what is that y-intercept? In this problem, we need to calculate slope and we need to find out by how much does it rise and what is the run. So the slope of this line shows us that it's going up, which means it's positive, and I'm counting by hundreds on the y-axis. So going up 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 from where I was, and then going across one hour tells me that the slope of the line is 500. So when I write the equation, 500 is what I pay per hour, x, plus I have the setup fee, which is the y-intercept number, and that's the 100. So when you look at this equation, the 500 still tells us about that unit rate, or the cost per hour,
and the 100 tells us about the additional, the added fee. Now I'd like for you to try questions six through 10. Come back and check your answers one at a time and see me if you have any questions. Go ahead and check your answer to number six. Remember the y-intercept is four, which means the line crosses the y-axis at the point zero, four. So first of all, put that point on the graph. Next, you need to find the slope. The slope of this line is positive, so it goes up from left to right. Starting at the y-intercept, move up two, and then move right one. You are now at the point one, six, so plot that point. Now draw a line to connect the two points, and you have your line. For question seven, in order to write the equation for the line that you see in the graph, you need to find the y-intercept and you need to find the slope. Remember, the y-intercept is where does the line cross the y-axis? In this case, it's at negative three. Then you need to find the slope. From the y-intercept, you can count down one and across two to get a slope of negative one-half. So the equation would be y equals negative one-half x minus three. In question eight, you're again writing the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. The y-intercept in this equation is at four, and the slope is a positive three over a positive one. You can see that the line is moving in the positive direction or upwards from left to right. So the slope is equal to three, which means the equation is y equals three x plus four. In question nine, we have a line that models the cost of renting a kayak. We're asked to write the equation in slope-intercept form, where x is the number of hours the kayak is rented and y is the total cost of renting the kayak. We need to use the information from the sign in order to write this equation. You'll notice that it crosses the y-axis somewhere between zero and 10, more specifically between five and 10. And we can get that exact number by looking at the sign. The sign tells us that there is a $6 deposit for renting the kayak, which means I have to pay $6 no matter how many hours I rent the kayak. So the y-intercept in this equation is six. Now I need to find the slope. Since the kayak is rented for $12 per hour, then that means however many hours X that I rent the kayak, I have to pay $12 for the rental plus the $6 for the deposit, which means my total cost Y is equal to 12X plus six. The cost per hour represents the slope of the line for that equation. For question 10, the first thing we need to do is identify the y-intercept, which in this equation is negative five. Once I know where the line crosses the y-axis, then I can use the slope to determine where the next point is. Since the slope is positive, that tells me I'm going to be moving up three and over one to get my second point. And now I can connect those two points to draw my line. And last, I'd like for you to try questions 11 through 14. Again, come back as you finish each one and check your answer before going on to the next one. See me if you have any questions. Check your answer with number 11. For part A, the correct equation is negative 5x plus 25. Why did she make that mistake or what mistake could she have made? Well, Amy probably forgot that she actually started with $25 in her bank account. And when she spent $5 each day, it's decreasing by five, but the beginning point or the y-intercept is not at $5, it's at $25. That's the amount of money that she had in her account before she began the spending of $5 each day. Now take a look at question 12. 
The line represents the cost of ordering concert tickets online. So when you write the equation in slope intercept form, remember X is the number of tickets that gets multiplied by $21 per ticket, and Y is the total cost after you add in the processing fee. So part B explains how I could do this without looking at the graph. The sign essentially gives me all of the information that I need. The $21 gets multiplied times X because I have to pay $21 per ticket. And this fee gets added in as soon as I purchase a ticket. So whether I buy one ticket, 10 tickets, or 100 tickets, I pay a $12.25 processing fee. In part C, it asks if the graph is a good representation of the situation. And the answer is, well, not really, because there is a point on the graph that doesn't make any sense. I would never owe $12.25 unless I've bought a ticket. So zero $12.25 is not really a point that I would find on this graph. The graph essentially would start at the point 1, 33, 25 to represent that as soon as you purchase one ticket, then you have to pay that processing fee. But if you haven't purchased any tickets at all, you certainly wouldn't have to owe somebody a processing fee for tickets that you don't have. For question 13, the first thing that I should do to graph that equation is to plot the point at the y-intercept. Remember that because this, is, this equation is in the form y equals mx plus b, I do not have a point at 0, 0. This is not a proportional relationship. Okay, 2, 5 is not an ordered pair that is on this graph. Remember when m equals 2 fifths, the 2 is the y number and the 5 is the x number. So the ordered pair would be 5 comma 2, not 2 comma 5. And we haven't talked at all about an x-intercept, and although it's the same um, kind of concept as a y-intercept, that's not something that we've discussed at this point. So the best thing to do is to use the y-intercept to create the first ordered pair, and then use the slope in order to create the second point and connect the points on the graph. For number 14, I'm going to do exactly what I said in number 13. Okay, I'm going to first find the y-intercept. That intercept point is at the point 0, 8. Next, I'm going to use the other points along that line to find the slope. In this case, I'm using a negative slope because my line is moving downward from left to right. Okay, and because it's going down, that means it's a negative slope. And it's going down 2, and then it's going over 1. So the rise is a negative 2, and the run is a positive 1. And negative 2 over 1 makes a negative 2 slope. So my equation is y equals negative 2x plus 8. If you have any additional questions, please come see me before you get your work done.